Hey guys, this is John. As you know, from time to time, I preview new courses that we have for sale on Chessable, but some of you may not know that we have a ton of free courses available to study on our site. And it's one thing we're very happy about over the past few years that Chessable has been around, that there's a number of free courses that anyone can go on and study. So I wanted to draw your attention to one such course and the user who created that course, and also tell you about a couple new features that we've implemented recently on Chessable. So the course we're going to have a look at is Knights on the Attack. It is by the user Alan B. And before we look at Knights on the Attack, let's check out Alan B's profile, because I am a big fan of Alan B's work. So he is a PhD. He's from South Africa, and you can read his profile. He's very passionate about chess and teaching chess. Here are the courses that he's published on the site. And the neat thing about his On the Attack series is, so these four courses here, Knights on the Attack, Rooks on the Attack, Queen on the Attack, Bishops on the Attack, are all free. So if you click on any of them, they're free. They follow a similar format. You can see they're very popular. This one, Rooks on the Attack, has uh, over 1,400 students. And it's a very nice way to practice tactics isolating a single piece. And if you're interested in Alan B's work and you appreciate what he's doing, definitely take a look at his Reversing Mate series. These are paid, paid courses, so he has two of them on Reversing Mate, and also the Unexpected Maiden 1. Let's go back and take a look at Knights on the Attack. So this one here has close to 1,000 students. I think after this video goes live, you guys are definitely going to push that over 1,000. It has 201 trainable variations, six informational lines. You can see it as a 4.8 out of 5 star rating, very strong star rating from over 100 ratings. And if we go into it, in the intro, Alan talks about the importance of a knight, why it's such a critical piece to understand and have a good grasp of. We have a nice quote by Yefim Bugalubo right here. To have a knight planted in your game at K6, meaning King 6, which is old school descriptive notation, is worse than a rusty nail in your knee. So very vivid description of what it's like to have a knight shoved deep into uh, your, your position. And in the intro here, he shows some basic knight operations just to get us started. We all know about a knight's ability to fork pieces. That's what makes it so unexpected. I was just talking about the unexpected nature of the knight in a video I released the other day, a blitz video using the clock as a weapon where a knight really helped me turn around the game in time pressure. Uh, we see... The Smothered Mate, an R Chess favorite. Shout out to R Chess, the old Smothered Mate. The Discovered Attack. In this case, Knight G6, winning the Queen on E8. And the Double Check. One thing about Double Check, so here, check from the Bishop on C4 and also the Knight on H6. Anytime it's a Double Check, by default, the Checked King has to move because you can't simultaneously take both pieces. So just kind of a quick mental shortcut. Double check always means, means the king has to move. And in this case, it's checkmate. Black has nowhere to go. The way the course is laid out. So the second chapter is knight moves. Chapter three is setting up the knight. And the fourth chapter is additional tactics to really test your knowledge. I'll go back to the introduction because Alan has a brief description of each chapter. Uh, so in the first chapter, knight moves. Find the knight move. This introduces the patterns. This chapter is ideally suited for beginners. So yeah, if you're new to chess or you just want to get like those real basic operations down with the knight, definitely that's the good, good chapter to check out first. And in chapter two, it gets a little harder because you often have to find a continuation before the knight really does some damage. So I've already studied all the variations in this course and I've really enjoyed it, but Let's overstudy a few lines just to kind of see. So knight moves, you can see that this one consists of 100 exercises right in this one chapter here. And let's click on one at random here to overstudy. So exercise 77 here, white to move. And I am liking knight f8 because I noticed this rook on g1 has the black king cut off here. And also this bishop on d4 is controlling the h8 square. So if knight f8 is a safe move to play, which it is, that is checkmate. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, how about one for black? Number 61, let's overstudy this. Okay, 
So the king is attacking the knight on f4. Rook d3, not possible, it's covered, but we have knight g2 check. Uh, notice the white king is also getting cut off along the second rank, so knight g2 check is checkmate. So this chapter ideally suited for beginners and those of you who just want to drill your tactics with knights. Some fairly straightforward examples here. Let's do one more, exercise number 32. Mm, okay, a little tougher on this one. Uh, so here, first thing I notice is that this knight is pinned. Now, we could take this pawn on d4, but then black will take here. So I'm actually looking towards this other knight. Maybe we can play knight c3, which is a nice little operation taking advantage of the pin here. So if d takes on c3, queen takes d d5 is possible. Yeah, and if knight c3, black takes our knight on f3, we can take on d5, black can take here, and then knight c7 check and go for a fork. Okay, so using a knight, getting into the game, uh, using a pin. Okay, and I think we may have this line that I just mentioned. Yep, check, and go in that rook in the corner. Okay, and I should mention that some of these lines are commentated by Alan B. In fact, quite a few of them are. So that is the knight moves chapter. Let's go into setting up the knight. And again here, it starts with exercise 101. If we scroll all the way down, 50 problems in this one. A little bit more complicated. Let's overstudy another one here. Okay, so white to play. Looking at our forcing moves. Two forcing moves here. G takes h7 check. Also queen takes rook. My, my eye is immediately drawn towards queen takes rook because I can follow with rook takes h7 at that point. And then when the king goes to g8, knight h6 will be checkmate. Whereas if we play g takes h7, the king hides on h8. And often that pawn on h7 will be a hindrance to white's attack. So queen takes rook. Force black to reply. Takes. Notice black cannot come out to f6 because that's covered by the knight. Also, this pawn is defended by the bishop. And now we bring the knight in. So as you can see, setting up for the knight to come in. That's the whole point of this chapter. Let's do one more from this chapter. Uh, let's do, from Black's point of view, 141. Okay. So Black's down material here. I guess there was probably just a queen capture on this square. Forcing moves, we have knight f3 check. We also have rook g2. Ooh, I definitely like rook g2 because the king would have to go to h1, and then the knight slides into g3. Nice pattern. Yeah, with both knights combining, this knight on h4 being critical to defending the rook. Okay. And let's try a couple problems from the additional tactics chapter. The very last one. So this one, if we want to click on the intro here, he has a separate intro for this. So an extra chapter of knight tactics, not all the moves are knight moves, nor do the mating puzzles always end with a knight giving mate, but the knight move will be an important part of each variation. Uh, and one thing, yes, I wanted to mention, he, I think he mentions this in the introduction, but all of these are taken from games and examples from strong players. Uh, I think here he says all the starting positions of this chapter are from games of players whose rating is above 2,500. If I'm not mistaken, I think in the very first section, yeah, he says all the positions are from games of the past 20 years and of players who have a rating of at least 2,200. So... That's always an interesting thing when an author adds real-life examples. I personally enjoy studying real-life examples more than contrived positions, even though I think studies, chess studies and um, compositions can be interesting. It always makes it a little more real, to me at least. So interesting to note that Alan put in the, the research to find these games and examples. So let's try a few from the additional tactics, which yeah, there's 50 examples in this chapter, 50 exercises. Let's try number 19. Okay, white to move here. This pawn on d5 is hanging with check, but black can take. I see another check that we have. Queen c6, king over, and knight d7 is mate. Uh-huh, so this just seems to be a mate in two. Okay. Yep, so setting up for the knight to come in. Let's try another one. Um, let's try... I guess I've been alternating white-black, so let's try another one from black's point of view. Okay, here. 
So again, two knights like side by side. Rook f2, king over, uh-huh, and then knight f3 check, force the king to the corner, and get rook takes h2 mate. I am liking that. All right, drive the king to the edge of the board and mate. So that is knights on the attack. Did a few problems from each chapter. I really enjoyed it. If you're an advanced player, you can get through a course like this pretty rapidly. Uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun working through these exercises, and I think there's a lot of value in isolating the, the movements of a particular piece and drilling a bunch of tactics. This is ideally suited for, for chessable, drilling a bunch of tactics around a particular theme. Uh, also important to work mi mixed tactics and challenge yourself with unique positions and not focusing exclusively on spaced repetition, of course, but spaced repetition can be an important aspect of your chess study, and we've got the perfect module for you. So thanks to Alan B. for these series of On the Attack courses. Hope you guys will take advantage of these uh, wonderful free courses on the site. Now, I wanted to mention a couple new features before I let you guys go that we have on Chessable. So the Chessable CEO, David Cramley, he recently got done programming uh, a cyclical feature that we now have. And this was inspired by the woodpecker method, which I will show right here. The woodpecker method, extremely popular course on the site. It was re released a few months ago. It's by Grandmaster Axel Smith and Hans Tiekening. This is a paid course. And we set kind of a goal. If this course got over a thousand students, we would program uh, a cyclical feature, cyclical review feature. So you can actually review any course on the site in the woodpecker style. And you can see we're at over 1,100 students now. So David, uh, true to his word, programmed that future, uh, that feature. Thank you, David. And he wrote a little blog post about it. So cyclical review, the woodpecker method feature you can use on any tactics courses plus custom repertoires. And it talks about what the cyclical review is. I won't give you guys like a full, full breakdown here, but just the main cycles as advocated in the woodpecker method. Cycle one, solve as many exercises as you can manage in four weeks. These exercises are your set and solve them. Uh, solving them brings you to the end of the first cycle. Okay, and David kind of walks you through what that would look like on Chessable. And then on to cycle two, solve the same set of exercises, but faster. This is the the thing behind the, the woodpecker method, the driving feature of it. You're trying to solve a large set of problems faster and faster. So same set faster within two weeks is the target. Okay, and again, showing how that work that works here. And then a repetition of the steps here. Aim to complete each cycle in half the number of days as the previous cycle. Round it up when dealing with an odd number of days. And again, the woodpecker method has been completed when the full set of exercises has been solved entirely in one day or after the seventh cycle if you are unable to solve the full set in a day. So the main advantage of the woodpecker method and this cyclical feature is getting you down as fast as possible solving those those uh, that large set of exercises. And maybe I can show you on Knights on the Attack, actually. So the way it works here, so under your course options on the right-hand side, there are quite a few variables you can you can change, but to get to that cyclical feature where it says schedule, the default is gonna be chessable spaced repetition, but you also have cyclical and you even have some other ones that have existed uh, for a while too. We'll talk about uh, custom in a second. But if we switch to cyclical, so it'll say set cycle end, this means your exercises, even the ones already ready for review, won't come up for review until the and until the set end date. Use, useful if you are following methods like the woodpecker method. And you can pick how long you want that initial cycle to last for. Okay, I actually did this earlier on the repertoire. So that is a completely new feature that we have inspired by the woodpecker method. So definitely uh, try that, especially if you're interested in, in trying to use that woodpecker method on a large set of tactical problems. And the other thing I wanted to mention, which David mentions in the blog post here, I believe. Yeah, bonus pro features. So this is only available to those of you who have Chessable Pro. Uh, custom review schedule. And he says here, it's been one of our most requested features. Uh, with this new feature, you can now define the spacing between each level of knowledge as you wish. 
So again, if we go to uh, the course options here, that one is right here, custom. So you can set the interval between one hour to one month, uh, the rate of increase, and the maximum interval. So uh, brand new feature, if you're interested in, in really customizing your experience with spaced repetition, definitely check out this as well. Again, only available to uh, pro members. And now the final thing I wanted to mention, we have a brand new course. Uh, couldn't resist mentioning this because this course in, in uh, its prior form or still existing form, maybe more well-known form, is actually the number one chess download on Kindle. So, and that is Tactics Time. It's by Tim Brennan and, and Thea Carson. And the publisher is New in Chess. So Tactics Time, right now it has 161 students. And it's 1,000 trainable variations of, I would say, beginner level problems. It focuses on very straightforward problems. But if you're interested in more tactics work, then tactics time, now on Chessable. Some of you have requested it. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, again, thanks to Alan B and all of you who make Chessable what it is, and especially with the wonderful user submitted content. I think it's just awesome that we have such great users like Alan B and these free courses. Take a look at these guys. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun to work through these and he put a ton of work into them and, and it definitely shows. And let me know if you have any questions about anything I discussed in this video and I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye.